Hello everyone. So this is the episode 5 of our Awake Tracheal Intubation series. Today I am presenting you a case of 42 year old male patient. He came to the hospital with a complaint of hoarseness and a foreign body sensation within the throat. He has this discomfort for almost 3 years now. The differential diagnosis was pharyngeal moss and the planned surgery was excision and biopsy of the moss. Preoperative laryngoscopy revealed hypertrophy of the base of the tongue and a significant lymphoid hyperplasia. Moss-like lymphoid tissue proliferation in the right pharyngeal epiglottic fold and left follicular can also be seen. And there was also a cystic lesion in the left piriform sinus. We have given adequate topical anesthesia following spray-as-you-go method. We have given topical anesthesia by 2% lidocaine solution two times in the oropharyngeal region, two times in the subglottic regions, and once in the supraglottic region. We need to be very careful that a good topical anesthesia is the key to success for these kind of patients. For a good patient comfort, we sedated the patient with IV dexamethamidomidin and IV fentanyl. And to avoid any cuff reflex, we also have given IV lidocaine. As you proceed it, and as the bronchos go at once, the airway become extremely narrow and we proceed through the left side. The bronchoscope was held in position above the fifth tracheal ring. And we can see the carina as well. At this point, the endotracheal tube was introduced. Placement of the tube is confirmed once the tube tip was appeared in the bronchoscopic view. Capnography also confirmed the correct placement of the ETT. The patient had no cough or gagging and the hemodynamics remained stable during the whole intubation procedure. So now let's go through the precautions that should have been taken in these kind of patients. As you all know, a rigid epiglottis may not lift or move normally with standard conventional intubation method. That's why it's impossible to see the vocal cords and this all could result in a very very adverse kind of an outcome. In these kind of patients, awake tracheal intubation is a good option. Most of the ATI procedures and trainings are being done from the head end position. So the reflexes are mismatched. Operators must retain hands eye coordination specifically for face to face positioning. While performing through the face to face positioning, the operator sees the patients 
away from the opposite direction than the usual. For example, the patient's right is now your left. The structures like the epiglottis and vocal cords appear flipped. We need to be very, very careful in this regard. Thank you so much, and I'll see you next time.